So folks, we are joined by our guest, the HR lady, Wendy Sellers. With an early completion of her undergraduate degree and a master's in healthcare administration from Northeastern PA, embarked on a career journey to Florida. Initially uncertain about her direction, Wendy found herself transitioning to HR when a recruiter noticed her in an elevator with a resume. I think this is a perfect <laughs> elevator pitch example. And uh, despite lacking direct preparation in her degrees, Wendy's academic background ep- equipped her with critical thinking skills and the ability to navigate compliance challenges. With over two and a half decades of experience, Wendy specializes in supervisor and manager training, HR education, leadership development, corporate culture, and provides valuable insights into HR operations, recruiting, downsizing, change management, and strategy. Wendy Sellers is also the host of the HR Lady podcast and maintains a presence on her YouTube channel, sharing valuable resources and insights on manager training topics. As we prepare to delve into our conversation on the topic at hand, we can't find or keep employees. Sounds interesting, isn't it? But before we (laughs) get started, here's an exciting twist. Let us tickle Wendy's brain first. So, Wendy, get ready for a rapid-fire round of random words. I'll mention a few and I would love to hear the first thing that comes to your mind in response without thinking much. If you're ready, let's I'm ready. Let's do it. (laughs) Okay, here comes the first word. Curiosity. Ask questions without judgment. Creativity. The same old, same old will not change the world. (laughs) Invention. Comes from the most interesting places and people. Future is very scary <laughs> <laughs> and bright as well. Book. I wrote two books. Wow. Movie. Some are way close to reality and other ones are so far off. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting perspective. <laughs> Talent. Very hard to find, even harder to keep. And that's that's our topic for today. <laughs> yes. Leadership. It's an activity, not a role. Role model. Something I aspire to be, but differently. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is aliens. It's an immigration term in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be very honest. I think this is one of the most creative rapid fire rounds on this show. And good job. I, I, I really appreciate <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And uh, there is one more rapid fire waiting towards the end of the episode. And uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, folks, welcome to the Guiding Voice podcast series where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future. I'm your host, Navin Samala, dedicated to making the world a better place through through valuable discussions that add value not only to your life, but also to your career. And thank you so much for tuning in. And Wendy, hearty welcome to the Guiding Voice. Finally, we are here in this conversation and I'm thrilled to host you today. And I, I have read your profile. It's so impressive. and I can't wait anymore to get started. And thank you. Well, thanks for you. having me. <laughs> All right. So let's get the ball rolling, Wendy. We'll start with your success mantra. So please share with our audience the top three things that I've attributed to your success so far. I would say, you know, the number one thing is true leaders um, that took me in and guided me uh, to be the HR lady. And when I had no experience and made a ton of mistakes. So that's the second one is learning from a lot of mistakes, but acknowledging that I made those mistakes, asking people to help me. And then they did. And then my, my third thing is I have this insane, uh, endless thirst for knowledge. And, and I've learned, uh, to have the ability to pivot because the world is full of change. And if you think you're going to keep going in the same direction all the time, (laughs) something like COVID (laughs) comes along and destroys that whole thought. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. I I think these are really inspirational. And let's uh, switch gears and move forward. So Wendy, you have had a fascinating journey from healthcare administration to becoming the HR lady. So could you share more about the pivotal moment in the elevator that led you to HR domain and how that set the course of your career? 
<laughs> yeah. So, you know, I went to college for, um, I started going, wanting to go to be a veterinarian because I love animals. But when we got to that whole dissecting the animals, I was mm. like, nope, can't do it. So I said, well, let me switch to the people side of healthcare. I got two degrees in healthcare administration. And when I started going into that, uh, that journey, I was like, this isn't for me. It's too slow moving too compliance driven, which is funny because I'm in HR now, which is highly compliance driven, but you know, healthcare just uh, wasn't satisfying for me. I, um, randomly moved to Florida without a job from Northeastern Pennsylvania in the United States. And I was, um, in an elevator. So the elevator pitch, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, I never thought about it that way. I was in an elevator going to an interview. This is when you had paper resumes and I was holding a resume in my hand and a woman got in and said, Hey, I'm a recruiter. What are you looking for? And I was like, ah, I don't, I, I don't really know. Here's my, here's my experience as an assistant manager. And I had some management experience and she said, well, my, my um, ex-husband's looking for a HR person. I'm like, sure, I can do that. And so, you know, I managed people before HR is part of that, but I did have a lot to learn. And eventually I went back to school again and got a master's degree in health and human resources and a whole slew of certifications that I couldn't even begin to name. <laughs> <laughs> So that was kind of like how I ended up in HR. And I just ended up at a really, really great company that was growing itself and had no HR. So I had nobody to compare me to and mm. great, great leadership team, very different um, people on the leadership team and everybody helped everybody. And it was just a really great experience where you were allowed to make mistakes and, and learn from them. And, you know, I was there for a very, very long time. And when I left that organization is when I realized Oh, the rest of the world is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really, you know, how I ended up becoming the HR lady is I had some experience um, in a not great organization and said, I don't want anybody to ever go through this again. So I'm going to become a consultant and help as many companies as possible and as many people and, as possible to not have that negative work experience and to really, um, to be quite honest, affect lives and change lives. And, and when did people start calling you the HR lady? Um, I didn't have a title at that first company because it was a small company. So it was just one of those things that you kind of get referred to. I didn't really think about it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, when I first started con doing consulting, I, I named my other, my first practice, something else. And then I finally said, that's it. I'm the HR lady. And so I got a trademark. I have two trademarks <laughs> on the HR lady. And, um, you know, I just kind of said, let's own it. Let's figure out what yeah. this is all about. But I am a very different HR person than than many HR people. I think our world has changed and HR is finally changing. Yeah. Um, but we're still 50% old school, 50%, you know, new school. So I lean more towards the new school of, hey, it's not just about rules and policies and, and procedures. It's about empathy and employee engagement yeah. and getting things done um, and treat, you know, treating people like humans and, and teaching people that they can be a leader no matter mm. what their role is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. And let's shift gear and talk about your manager and supervisor training. Like you have been in this particular space for over 25 years. So what key yeah. principles do you emphasize to empower leaders in managing their teams effectively? So thanks for asking that. Um, you know, I do a lot of management and supervisor training and speaking at conferences now. And then I, I do custom training for, for organizations. And the biggest thing that um, I focus on now is communication, 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 communication. There's not enough communication in the world. We need to make sure that, you know, uh, managers need to understand that every human that works for you is different. So you need to know multiple personality styles, multiple personality traits, how different people communicate during change and conflict. Most humans do not like change or conflict. Some of us are, are okay with it, but most humans do not like that. And so you might react differently to an announcement where I might react differently. And, uh, you know, managers and supervisors really need to understand that most people need time to accept that there's change, even if it's a, it's a project deadline. 
You know, if it changed from Friday to Thursday, that may throw somebody into complete chaos or other people be like, that's cool. No problem. I'll work late. Well, if you have kids or you have other things going on in your life outside of family obligations, maybe you can't work late. And let's face it, since the pandemic, people don't want to work those extra hours. And I don't blame them. We we've been taking advantage of our employees for way too long. And now the new world is nope, no more. So we'll get into that in a minute, too. (laughs) (laughs) But so, so, you know, just kind of summarize that is communication is the number one thing that um, managers need to know about. And that covers a million different things from hiring all the way to promoting and giving feedback uh, to having meetings and project deadlines and project schedules. It's all about communication. You know, I really think it's the number one problem in our world that we we miscommunicate or we make assumptions off of what Mm -hmm. somebody else is saying. And then there's conflict. And it's all based on negative or poor communi- communication. Agreed. I think that that is a crucial part. If we can be good at communication, we can win everywhere, be it personal friend or professional friend. And couldn't agree more. So let's move forward and uh, talk about the core of today's conversation. So in today's competitive job market, the struggle to find and retain employees is a common challenge. So what innovative strategies or approaches have you found particularly effective in addressing this issue? If everybody raises, no, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) So it is, you know, it is in this day and age, we're almost in 2024. um, You know, it is about compensation. Everything is expensive, especially in the United States, but everywhere else too. Uh, Things, prices have gone up. So employees pay needs to go up, but it's not just about pay. Giving somebody a raise, might keep them there for another couple months, maybe a year or so, but that doesn't mean they're going to stay there forever. And it doesn't mean they're going to be more productive or fully engaged, just means that they haven't quit yet. So just giving people more money or more benefits is not going to retain them. We need to train our managers how to communicate with their employees, how to manage employees, how to give feedback, how to, you know, um, encourage people and motivate people. And then unfortunately, also to uh, get rid of people that are bringing the rest of the team down. Sometimes you just let go of one person who's the negative Nelly, or even though they're the greatest producer, they might be the worst person to work with. And sometimes if you just let that person go and find their joy somewhere else, the rest of the team's like, yes, I am engaged again. (laughs) I am so happy because I don't have to work with somebody who makes me miserable. So there's a lot. There's not a one you know, one fix for everybody. Um, you really have to look at every single company and every department in that company as a unique, unique entity. It's not just about money. And I also want to say for our listeners is don't just blame the managers, okay? Because we often promote managers and forget to give them training. And then we're mad at the managers that they don't know how to manage. But yesterday they were an employee and today they're a manager and they for some reason, companies think like they're just going to snap their fingers and people are going to come in fully trained and know what to do. And no, that is not the case at all. <laughs> no, I, I think you brought in an important point. So due to natural progression or something, somebody gets into that leadership training, leadership position or a managerial position. and But without la- without proper training, I think they can't be living to that particular role to the fullest extent. I, I, I think uh, it makes absolute sense. And Wendy, Let's also talk about the the current situation and also if you in your two and a half decades of uh, exp- corporate experience being in this uh, HR space, right? A lot of things have evolved and you said empathy and communication are playing a critical role and employees preferences have also changed over a period of time. People used to hop jobs or shop on jobs only for money, but it is no longer just money. There are so many other aspects as well. Likewise, so with this evolving landscape of work preferences and priorities how do you adapt your recruitment and retention strategies so that it will meet the changing needs and also expectations of employees because what works today may not work in 2030 or 2035 yeah i'm so glad you asked that so that's the biggest thing that i have been working on with many of my my clients is overhauling their recruiting processes but not just their recruiting processes, their onboarding processes and practices. So um, 
there is a false perception that onboarding is day one. No, onboarding could be three months for one role, six months for another role, 12 months for another role. So, you know, the first thing that I would tell anybody who's struggling with attracting people, of course, you need to look at a compensation strategy and see if you're even competitive in the, in the market. And if you're not, then you do need to change your compensation and benefits package. Um, but what you really need to do is pause that job ad, like just stop for a minute, pause the job ad, and let's really look at it. The job ad is a platform to say, what am I going to be doing in this workplace? And then it's also a sales ad too. So it's a little bit of HR and a little bit of marketing put in together in one. Well, if you only have it as a marketing ad where it's like, oh, we're a great place to work, but it doesn't really tell you what you're doing in the job, then you're going to get a gazillion applications because they want to work for your culture, but you've never been really clear about what you're going to do in this role. And then if you only have it as an HR ad, it doesn't tell you anything about your, your uh, recruiting. So HR and marketing should be working together or business development, whoever you use in your organization, to make sure that your job ad is attractive and realistic. It's not fake. And then we should be slowing down, not so slow, but we should be slowing down in the recruiting process so that we have already pre-vetted out all the questions we're going to ask of the candidates when mm. they uh, submit their at or their their resume during yeah. the first interview, which might be via email or via AI or via you know like Zoom or even via phone. So there should be you know pre-vetted questions for the entire job position that maybe a receptionist can help with these three questions. Then the HR department can can help with you know the next ten questions that are. I call them go, no go questions such as, Hey, we require you to be in person. Are you willing to do that? No. Okay. Then we're not going to interview you, you know, but we forget to the, put in the application, these clarifications of, Hey, we do background screenings. Hey, we need you to be in person two days a week. Hey, uh, we need you to have a license of X, Y, Z. We don't find that out until the third or fourth interview and we've wasted everybody's time. The candidates, the managers, the recruiters, HR, and then everybody's upset. So let's just slow down and get the recruiting process right before you push that yeah. put that job ad up. And then it's going to go a lot quicker for the candidate. It's going to go a lot quicker for the whole team and there's going to be less frustration. Yeah. I think this is a great strategy. I have worked on one of the in in one of my previous organizations. I worked on streamlining the entire onboarding process, and we use, we called it as zero day onboarding. And as part of that, I've gone through a couple of parameters, and I think you brought in right points in terms of capturing what the employee expects, so that before the interview happens, right, at least we'll get to know whether or not this person meets our, meets or fits our criteria. I, I that is. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Great, and like, why don't yeah. we yeah. ask them what they want and listen, right? But yeah. then you yeah. have to actually do it. So then yeah. if you give a job offer out, now the candidate wants to know, when do I start? What do I need to do? Where do I need to be? What information do you need for me? Have this all on an onboarding or, you know, a new hire um, a new hire checklist and you send it to them in advance. So yeah. they know this is what your first week is going to look like. Um, by the way, we have training programs and coaching set up for the first three months. Here's the schedule. Does this work for you? And so that way the manager and everybody that's involved in training this new hire isn't surprised on Wednesday, like, Oh, I'm supposed to train somebody today. No, you've known about that before we would <laughs> put the job ad out. So I don't know something about, we talked about earlier communication. <laughs> <laughs> con conquer with you. I loved it. And uh, now let's talk about the organization part. So far we have been talking about the evolving change, evolving uh, changes in the needs of the employees and the expectations, right? Now let's talk about the change in the business world, which is inevitable. So what advice do you have for companies going through periods of change? Like how can they navigate the challenges of downsizing and also driving this change effectively, right? Yeah. So my biggest piece of advice is get your employees involved. They know more than you think or more than you assume, and, you know, assuming gets us in trouble. Um, so if you're going through growth, you're going through possible downsizing, you're changing products, you're changing services, 
get committees together and not just of uh, the people that are at the top of the org chart, because I'm sorry, I was at the top of the org chart and we often have no clue what's really going on. The people on the front line know what's going on. So I love doing committees or maybe I, you know, we have a big, uh, big change coming up and I have a committee of eight to 12 people. Some have been there forever. Some might be a manager. Some just started yesterday. Some might be a lower level employee, but they are the ones that are touching the, the product and the client and the customer service. Ask them, hey, we think that we're going to change this. How is this going to affect our clients? How is this going to affect the team? And then listen. So you have to listen. If you're not going to listen, then don't even do what I'm saying because you're just going to get everybody frustrated and they're going to walk out the door and then you're going to have to go back to uh, replacing them. And, and, you know, so many larger companies and small companies too, I guess, they just look at the money and say, okay, we're going to cut staff. So let's just cut these people with these salaries. And that's the only person that has the king keys to the kingdom. And so let's make sure that we really know what are our employees doing and do we need them or do we not need them? And if we don't know what our employees are doing, that doesn't mean they're not doing anything, but it doesn't mean that they are. So that means the managers aren't doing their job because they don't know what's going on in the day-to-day life of the of their team. So ask your employees, get them involved. They know yeah. more than you think they do. I got, got it. I think um, it resonates with uh, the change management philosophy, which we used to follow at General Electric. In fact, uh, all of us were fortunate. I mean, I worked for General, for General Electric. I'm, I'm a proud GE alumni where I worked for 11 years. And I've gone through this change acceleration process training, which had gone for about five days, five full days of training. And we were told the same thing, like involve employees right from the beginning and communicate the vision and keep them engaged from time to time. Over communicate rather than under communicate. Make sure that they are part of the game. I, I, I love I love your insights. Now let's talk about the uh, culture part of it. So hiring process is crucial in terms of finding the right employees. But what key aspects do you emphasize to ensure companies not only attract talent, but also make sure they they hire the right cultural fit for long-term commitment? Because it is not that we hire an employee quits an organization within three or six months. It is going to be quite expensive for the companies, right? So we, yeah. if they're culturally aligned, they're going to stick with us for a long time. Right. So my biggest piece of advice there is to, if you don't already have a set of company values, to create them. And if you are going to be creating or dusting off your company values, um, get uh, employees involved again, because they're going to be the ones that say, all right, this is how it really happens here. This is how our, what our culture is. And even if you have a not great culture, this is an opportunity to fix it by getting your employees involved. So I always do committees. Again, I'm a big committee person. I like to get as many people involved as possible and say, what are the, give me a company that you like and respect Mm -hmm. and let's find out what their company values are. They're usually words like trust and honesty and communication and respect. Um, You know, they're, they're nice words and they should be, but let's face it. Some companies are like, Hey, we're all about money and sales is our highest priority. I don't necessarily agree with that, but if that is your company culture, then make it clear. Yeah. Put it in your job descriptions too. Mm. So nine out of 10 times when my phone rings with my clients, it's not because things are going well at their company. It's because somebody is acting a fool. It's usually performance. We could usually handle like, oh, they're not performing. They're not meeting their goals. But behavior, we're usually confused. What do I do? They're doing their job and nobody wants to work with them. Well, that's when I pull out the company values and say, well, they're violating the behavioral expectations of the workplace. And if they don't fix it, they can't work here, even if they're selling the most products, even if they're making the most products, even if all the customers love them, if the employees that are working next to them don't want to work with them, that's a huge issue. So determining your culture, the first thing is to figure out what your company values are and what they should be, and then put it through your entire employee life cycle from the job ads to the job interviews, to the performance uh, and behavior reviews, to feedback conversations, everything. And then soon your employees will say, okay, I have to behave this way or I can't work, work here. And then that word gets out that, okay, you're, this is a safe zone for us to speak up respectfully and professionally. And this is the kind of company that I want to work for. Superb. I, I, I loved it. And I'm thoroughly enjoying this conversation. It's time for us to add some excitement and some more spice. So, Wendy, 
get ready for the second rapid fire round with a set of intriguing questions just to spice up the episode if you are ready let's get started <laughs> sure <laughs> here comes my first bullet if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it what would it say suck it up buttercup be a leader people will follow wow <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of my book to be fair <laughs> Awesome awesome. <laughs> and what is one thing you are really bad at that you wish you were good or better at? I wish I had more patience. <laughs> and can you describe yourself in just one word? Mouthy. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your favorite thing about living in the current exciting times the 21st century? Oh boy. Um I'm going to say AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I don't know if it's a superpower, but I really wish I could speak um multiple languages. So that's on my to-do list. Uh, awesome. <laughs> I think it's a good skill to have. And uh, last one for the rapid fire, what is one electronic gadget or a fantasy gadget that you that you would like to see or invent yourself? I wish I could have ChatGPT or Google Bard just living in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with with some safety parameters cuz it could get out of control, but it's my new best friend is ChatGPT and I I wish I could just use it for everything. <laughs> I I loved it. <laughs> Great rapid fire. Let's flip back to the mainstream and as we wrap up our discussion could you share one piece of advice or a key takeaway that you believe could make a significant difference for businesses struggling with the common challenge of finding and retaining employees in today's dynamic work environment it is, there's no easy um no easy answer to that so i think the biggest thing is to maybe slow down um get experts involved whether internal or external and figure out a way to get the feedback from your employees of what's going well and what's not and then how you could fix the what's not going well so communication change getting people comfortable with change and that comes from the ownership too they're not always comfortable with change but if you're hiring people and you're paying them a lot of money and everything's a lot of money why aren't we listening to them why aren't we asking them for their opinion of how we can improve our company so you know ask and then listen fabulous advice i think uh, yeah it's going to definitely yield a lot of results and uh, i really appreciate all the candid insights and uh, i thoroughly enjoyed the conversation i had said earlier so how is your experience being hosted on the guiding voice platform i loved it thank you so much for having me um i i love having a, a voice out there the guiding voice and the rapid fire would definitely threw me off a little bit but fortunately i was on top of it <laughs> you are <laughs> You did extremely well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm used to being on stage and people asking random questions, so I always have to be like, "All right, no time to look this up. You better know it." <laughs> <laughs> and and I enjoyed every bit of the conversation and thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking time in joining me today, Wendy, and looking forward to hosting you again in future. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Wendy Sellers, the HR lady. Yep. So for those of you who have tuned into the episode you'll find Wendy's credentials and also links to her both the books in the show notes or the episode description so go grab a copy and also connect with her and friends that was our episode with Wendy Sellers the HR lady before we jump into the fun trivia section we have a quick request if you haven't already subscribed to the guiding voice podcast please subscribe from wherever you have tuned in because subscribing keeps you updated on new episodes and also if you have enjoyed this conversation and found it beneficial please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who would also like TGV the guiding voice so spread the knowledge and help others grow just like you now let's cruise into the trivia segment of today's episode so today we had amazing conversation in terms of how to find and retain employees i i would like to present a few general trends and statistics related to employee retention So first one is about the cost of turnover the cost of employee turnover is substantial on average as per the society for human resource management estimates replacing an employee can cost an organization between 50% to 60% of the departing employees annual salary 
second one is about employee engagement impact gallup's state of the global workplace report reveals a significant impact of employee engagement on productivity and teams in the top quartile of engagement are 17% more productive and experience 70% fewer safety incidents underlining the importance of engagement in retention efforts third one is about career development influence career development opportunities play a crucial role in retaining employees and according to linkedin's workplace learning report 94% of the employees would stay longer with a company that invests in their career development which emphasizes the link between growth opportunities and employee retention so folks if you have any great ideas related to employee engagement and employee retention please feel free to share them in the form of comments if you are watching it or you on youtube or if you have found this on social media platforms you can comment there as well i am going to review them for sure that's it for today's episode i really appreciate you taking time for tuning in and also being part of our awesome tgv community would love to hear from you so do not hesitate to share your ideas feedback topic recommendations guest speaker suggestions either through our social media platforms or email us at the guiding voice for you at gmail.com and let's create content that resonates with you i am your host navin samala a lifelong learner and my goal is to have impactful conversations that improve not only your life but also your career until next time take care and stay inspired remember the future holds great things because the best is yet to come goodbye for now see you on the next episode with another amazing guest